Christmas. Song of all time. That has to go to number one, otherwise Christmas just won't be Christmas. Elton John, welcome. Thanks very much. I'm so pleased to have you on. It's great to be here, thank you. <laughs> now, why did you choose that particular song? Is it because you're a great fan of the film? Uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I, I saw the film and it was a hit. By, and it was sung by Bing Crosby and Grace Kelly, who was a gorgeous, gorgeous woman. And I was so impressed that she could sing as well. So I've always kept it in mind, but on, in a film it's only two minutes long. So we had to elongate it a bit. It's the bit with the boat. If anybody hasn't yeah. seen that film, it's, it's in high society, it's high society, isn't it? Yeah. And she's lying by the pool. Yeah, and she's so she's gorgeous. Very well. yeah. She is very yeah. well, she was very gorgeous, yeah. wasn't she? Now you've got your new album out as well, duets. Yeah. With lots of different amazing duets on it. Yeah. Um, is there anybody else left that you would like to actually sing with? Yeah, there, we wrote a list of people that I wanted to sing with, and most people said yes. I mean, there wasn't all, they weren't all huge stars. I, I wanted some big, some some people that I admired and some friends on the album. Uh, we wrote down Bono and Michael Stipe from R.E.M. and Neil Young and Stevie Winwood, but they were all busy. Um, with, uh, but um, yeah, there's still loads of people I like to sing with. It's nice when you get in the studio with other artists because if you do it live together, yeah. and then you bounce off each other and it's great fun. So there might be a duets album number two. There could be. Um, and the, the whole purpose was to do the duets with the people in the studio. Because I've done duets in the past where you've done it when someone's put their voice on and then you don't do it separately. Which yeah. it's not really interesting like that. So yeah. this was real good fun. It was done well, very quickly. I think we should, uh, we've got loads of questions all right, for you. Then. So I think we should get one first of all from Craig. Where are you, Craig? Hello there. question. <laughs> what is she like about your record? That there's <laughs> a lot more room in the house. Um, <laughs> uh, How many records were there in that collection? Oh, there were, oh, there were about 25,000 singles and about 15,000 albums. And uh, I just didn't have any room to put them anymore, so we sold it for charity and then I've got, I replaced it with the records with CDs, which are much easier to store. Um, <laughs> it was a shame because I love records. I prefer records to CDs, but I had to get rid of them because they took up too much room. Right. But I'll live. Well, let's go to the phones. Let's go to line one. Hello, line one. Who's there? Hello, it's Liza McLean from Surrey. Hi, Liza. What's your question for Elton? Do you think true love will be number one at Christmas? And do you think that people buy more romantic love songs at Christmas than any other time? Uh, I don't know whether it's going to be number one. It's number I know two. it's going to be number one. Number two at the moment. Um, uh, I, I'm really pleased with the way it's done anyway. Uh, I do think people buy more romantic songs at Christmas and Valentine's Day, that period of the year, because that's when you think about the people you love most. That's what Christmas is all about, really. It's when uh, a time of thinking about the people who are nearest and dearest to you. Uh, yeah. That's why we put it out. We're crafty, really. Do you love the song, Liza? <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah, OK, well, thanks for your thanks. call. Thank you. Let's take a call from Samantha. Oh, not a call, a question. Mm -hmm. Where are you, Samantha? Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, you're there. You're right next to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's Far the away. Shame, what, Watford Football Club? But have you ever wished you would see on football? Uh, I'm still life president of Watford, um, and I look for the results and everything, but I don't go to the games very much because I haven't been here very often. But I listen into, they have a hospital broadcasting service, so when I'm away, I can phone up and ask the score. They're still the team I follow. Uh, but it's not the same not being chairman, and it's, um, I don't feel so involved. But um, you know, it's up to the other people now to run the club. I had a wonderful time being with Watford. I do miss it, but uh, it just—I haven't got enough time to do that and my career as well. No, it's just too many things. Isn't yeah. It? Okay, let's go back to the phones. Hello, line four. Who's there? Uh, Laura Perrin from uh, St Albans. Hello, Hi, Laura. Laura. What's your question? Um, well, I've been going to piano for six months now. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't enjoy practicing at all. I love the piano, but I, <laughs> but I hate all the pieces I'm set by my teacher, Mrs. Dutton. Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Dutton, you're in trouble. <laughs> no. And, uh, and uh, well, I, uh, I, I was just wondering. I've, um, I really love the piano. I was just, yeah. wa just wondering: is the, uh, is the saying "practice makes perfect" really true? Uh, well, I used to hate practicing as well. Um, and I used to practice as least as possible. But do you play by ear as well? Yes, my you mom do. Does, it's you do. Oh, well, if you play by ear and you keep practicing a little bit, um, just a little, yeah. just try and practice a bit because it does help. I mean, I used to kick and scream about practicing because I used to want to play what I liked most of the time. But um, try and keep practicing a little bit, and uh, and the two of them, if you play by ear and you play by music as well, it does help, and uh, you will benefit it later on in life. <laughs> All yeah, right. How old are you, Laura? 
I'm 10. You're 10. Yeah, well, keep doing it, okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank keep you, Laura. Practicing those scales. Sorry, I love your music. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Bye, Laura. Okay, where's um Sophie? Yeah. You're there. What's your question? Um, are you friends with the people on your new duet album, or do you just sing with them? Um, I'm friends. Of, I knew Chris Rea and Kiki D and Nick Kershaw and Paul Young and, and Bonnie Raitt and some of the people I hadn't met before like Tammy Wynette and Katie Lang, uh, I'd met once. Um, so um, that was a nice thing. I was kind of nervous about singing with the people that I, didn't, I hadn't met before. Um, but we all got on really well. It was, uh, it was a really fun experience. Elton, would you ever record with Take That? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Gary's got a wonderful voice. I mean, yeah. And guys from E17 sing brilliantly too. I just heard their new single yesterday. So. Boys yeah. to Men, all those SWV, and uh, all those kind of groups from the States. It's nice to hear people singing another harmony. Yeah. That. yeah. Great. Well, let's yeah. get back to the phones. Line oh, three. Back to the phones. To the phones. Three. <laughs> Hello, line three. Who's Hello. there? Hello, this is Joanne Diamond from London. Hi, Joanne. Hi. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Joanne. I'd just like to ask you um, how you'd be spending Christmas this year. I'm going to go to America and spend it with some friends in Atlanta. Um, and then I'm going to go. Uh, to Hawaii for a holiday before I start work again. But I'm just going to have a quiet Christmas with some friends over in America. Right. Okay? Does that answer your question, Joanne? Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, you have a good Christmas. Thank well, you. Bye. Mark, where are you? Yes. There's no what's questions your question? from this side, it's not fair. I know, I don't know what happened, they've gone silent on that side. <laughs> Mark, what's your question? <laughs> Can you remember your question? Yeah. I think it, I think it was there, Mark. Question, I had a Mark. quick. Do you enjoy being interviewed? Do I enjoy being interviewed? When it's someone as luscious as Emma, <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Elton. <laughs> and I didn't ask you to say that, did no, I? You, no, you didn't. No, no. You said glamorous, didn't you? I think uh, I said another I, word, yes. I just changed it to luscious. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that question, Mark. <laughs> but uh, we think we're going to take another one from down here now. Simon, um, you go ahead. Do you help with the design of your record covers? Do I help design the record covers? Yeah, sometimes. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I always have the final say on how it's done. On the new one, there's a picture of two chairs, and I just wanted it to be very simple. I don't like my photograph on the front of things very much, because I don't like having my photograph taken. Um, so there are two of my bathroom chairs on the front, and uh, that's it. But the, the idea of having two empty chairs with me being in one of them and the other person, whoever I'm singing with, will be in the other. So that was my idea. Um, but it's always, you run out of ideas sometimes, so you have to get help. But usually I have the final say. Well, thank you very much, Elton. We've run out of, you know, time for any more questions, I'm That's afraid. That's quite all right, Emma. Sorry about it's been... not having any <laughs> questions from here. But you are going to be in the video garden later on. I am going to be in the video garden. Yes. I hate being put in that position, by the way. Do you? Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, we're going to be in I can hear Mr. Blobby somewhere, and where Mr. Blobby is, it must mean that Andy's here. I just wanted to say, Elton John was at the Take Back concert I was at, so I'm sure Gary Barlow was watching. If he is watching, he'll phone in and tell us whether he would do a duet with Elton John, and maybe we can make a duet happen for next time. Help yourself to the picnic there as well, if you want it. But now I want to ask our video card gardeners some questions first. So, Elton, I'll come to you in a minute. Tony, um, in your dream garden of paradise, what would the birds be singing? Um... Unchained Melody, the Righteous Brothers. Yeah? That's yeah. a, a favourite of yours? Yeah, it is, yes. Yeah. So it does something to me. You know? I think I like the way that <laughs> the, the title's not mentioned in the song. Okay. Yep. Good, All that's right. a good choice. Elton, what would the birds be singing in your dream garden? Um... Ooh. Tell me about Aretha Franklin. Any, well, any, any problem, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Big okay. fan. Okay, all right, let's see what the first right, video right, is. Let's see what we've got in the first video. Here we go. Oh, and it's uh, the Wonder Stuff, Full of Life. Elton, could you do me a favour? Could, could you, you stick it up the nose? This is the Wonder Stuff. Yeah, yeah, full of Life. There you go. That's smiling all the way through the video, so I thought... I'm not surprised. It looked it nice good. in Spain. It was Happy Maria, video. Was it yeah. in Spain? Yeah. yeah. I'd probably okay. be happy as well if I made a video in Spain. Yeah, I think so. Elton. I like the record. I couldn't see it very. It's the screen so far away. <laughs> <and> I, <laughs> Sorry about that. The rain tells the pinner. Yes. Um, but I like the record a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right then. Yeah. Well, can, do you mind watering the uh, flowers yeah, then? If you'd like and, to pick uh, up your watering yes. cans. And head this way. This on here, yeah. So if you could give a bit of water to this as much as you feel it deserves. Careful there, mate. Well, this is oh. wonder stuff, is it? This is the wonder stuff, yeah. There we go. 
Oh, oh, it's got oh, a lot of water. It's, it's a flood. Oh, oh, it's well, a shooter. It's definitely a shooter. Okay, right, well, that's our first shooter. Okay, what's the <laughs> next one? Then, okay, then, well, the second video, it's Banny Manilow, and this is called Could It Be Magic in 93. So, Tony, would you do the business now? Stand up, please. Banny Manilow. Could yeah. it be magic? We've got a video recorder up there, you know. It moves his eyes. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> and no, it's true. Barry's next record is actually going to be called Could It Be Film 93? And he's going to record that under the name of Barry Normanilo. <laughs> so buy that. Right. And why not? Why as, not indeed? As Barry Norman would say, you see, there's all that. I get it, yeah. I, all I got that one. Ah, I got okay, it. let's take some opinions. Elton, it's actually not your turn yet. So, um, Tony, <laughs> what did you uh, think of that one? It's been around this song for a long time. It's a good song. And uh, it's a real part, a club song. Um, Video, I'm not sure about. I didn't really see enough of it. Okay, okay. well, let's see how it does. Let's see if it shoots our dreams. Wow. Thank you very much, Trevor and Simon. Thank you, Elton John. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello, I'm Elton John. I'm here to do the Morgan and Wise show. Oh, yes. Mr. Morgan and Mr. Wise told me to give you this message. Oh, thank you. Dear Elephant, please go to. <laughs> Time of change, and change means progress. And what better time to change than the year of the silver? <laughs> Over the last few years, scientists, particularly in America, have become increasingly convinced that it's the dolphin and not the monkey or ape which bears the closest similarity to the intelligence of the human being. Well, that's it for now. I'll be back at nine o'clock with the news at ten. <gasps> Letter about the Morecambe and Wise show. Now they are Sergeant Wilson. <laughs> Can I help you? Yeah, I I've got a letter about the Morecambe and Wise show. Oh, you have to ask Catherine Mannering. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Morecambe and Wise. tell you about the new play what I just wrote. Oh yes. It's entitled Serrano Goodbye. <laughs> Baby, 
you see that you, you, you me, me, and everybody needs a part time love. Part time love. Part time love. I seem to be pulling in the wrong direction with you. You, my love. is the most coveted international rock award. It's given only to the true, the true champion of rock music. It is rock's holy grail. Uh, one of Eric's friends in Los Angeles has something he wants to say. Here's Elton John. Eric, what can I say? You've been a friend. You're, I can't think of any other musician, uh, any musician that wouldn't want to work with you. Um, you're the best guitarist, and uh, I look forward to playing with you at Nebworth. Eric, I love you. Well done, mate. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher as an extra in his new video. The megastar singer couldn't resist using clips of the Iron Lady leaving her ministerial home, number 10 Downing Street, for his new single, It's Easier to Walk Away, which will raise money for AIDS charities. Elton says it was pure coincidence that the Prime Minister resigned just days after he had finished recording the song, making it, in his words, wonderfully topical. Mrs Thatcher has made no comment on her new role as an actress. 20 years of hits, including his recent number one single, Sacrifice. We got up with Elton to find out about his more humble beginnings. Ah, when I was at school, I used to play piano in the pub um, Thursday nights, Friday, Saturday and Sunday to supplement my income. Or the, what, no, I didn't have any income apart from pocket money, but um, to, to pay for my amplifier and uh, microphone and stuff like that and buy for an electric piano. So that, that I used to earn a quid a night and then someone used to take the box around and people used to put money in the box. But it's no After leaving school, Elton joined a semi-professional band working with artists such as Patti LaBelle. However, Elton wasn't satisfied and decided he wanted to be a songwriter, an ambition he realised when he eventually met up with longtime partner Bernie Taupin. I answered an advert in the Musical Express for songwriters and stuff like that, and I, through that I met a guy called Ray Williams, who through him I met Bernie. And it was just chance, but I mean, looking back on it, it was a fairly brave decision to leave the band, because I was very innocuous as a person. I had a bit of an inferiority complex. With Bernie's help, Elton began to be noticed in Britain, but it was in America that the big break finally came, and he played a showcase gig in L.A. I think that the, the celebrity-packed orchestra uh, the audience thought I was going to come out with an orchestra. How? I'll never get on the stage. I never know. 
Uh, but I came out with hot pants and flying boots and um, <laughs> Mickey Mouse ears, and we, we were a rock and roll band. We just let fly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Elton John. Uh, that's used up my ration for next week, isn't it, obviously? Yeah, yeah. Um, you're looking terrific. Thank you. You're looking, and what a great year it's been Is that two you. W's or two R's? <laughs> oh, thank you, Elton. Bang <laughs> yeah. uh, goes my free meal after the show. There you right? go, that's it. No, no hospitality room for you later. No. Um, <laughs> now, this year you've had what? You've had a number one album and a number one single. Two number one albums, actually. Two yeah. number one albums? You, you snuck one past me. That's a fa must be one of your best years ever, isn't it? it it's been a really good year. Yeah. I can't grumble, can I? Really? Are, you still, are you still surprised that you're at the top? I mean, you, you're up there and you beat, I think, Adamski, one of the bright young things of the pop world, to number one, and, and you're competing with them. Does that surprise you? I like beating bright young things. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you had the sun on you uh, again. Yes, if you yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I've gone through that before, haven't I? No, I better not do that. Um, it's just really nice. It's a bonus. I, I, all I've ever done is written songs that I, I wanted people to like, and I... I've always liked what I've done. Some of them you get fed up with that in the end. But when you first write a song, uh, if somebody else buys, likes it and buys a record, that's a really added bonus. And um, just, I suppose we've been really lucky for 20 years, you know. It's, uh, it doesn't seem like 20 years, but a lot of it's been a blur. You've, well, we'll get onto that in yes, a minute. A um, you've outlived a lot of kind of uh, pop stars as well who've had kind of briefer uh, space in the charts. What do you think of the current crop? What do you think of, for example, Madonna? I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> I think she's a brilliant, um, <laughs> brilliant marketing expert. She's, oh, right. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, I'd rather read a Barbara Carton novel than blow Madonna. No, that's not fair, actually. There are a couple of her records that are really good. I'm just not, I'm not really into it. I don't like people who don't really sing on stage. I don't like the Janet Jackson, Madonna people that, you know, didn't mime on stage. It's not my scene, man. What about the other kind of performers then who, who, who started at the same time as you? What about, for example, Wad Stewart? I know you were very friendly with yeah. at one time, and he's back in the news um, with wedding number 37 or something. Yes, he's going, yes. The now, Rod Steiger of rock and roll, or the Mickey. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, he's going to be, he's getting married on Saturday, I think. Do you think this one will last? <laughs> now, I, Is George I, Best sober? <laughs> I, I hope it does. And everything, but he's got a great sense of humour. He must have. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've read that you have uh, pet names for each other. That he calls you um, Sharon and you call him Phyllis. That's incredibly regret, yes. Now, yeah. where, where does and that I call come you from? Diana. <laughs> <laughs> so, where does, what does Phyllis stand for? Why do you call what Phyllis? Oh, it was sort of years ago when, when people used to travel around in transit vans, there was a place called Eel Pie Island. And when people did gigs there, and it was, um, I had played for Long John Baldy at that time. And it just had written on the uh, Ada Baldwin and the Hoochie Coochie ladies featuring Phyllis Stewart. And it's, then I've always remembered that. It stays in so is he. It's Phyllis is curiously appropriate for him, actually. It is it? indeed. And Sharon is very appropriate for me. And, <laughs> and, and Diana is very appropriate for you. <laughs> thank you for rubbing that, that one that's in. Fair, that's thank uh, you. Now, look, look, you obviously you've lost a hell of a lot of weight. Last time I saw you, you were on the last resort a few years ago, and you, you looked very different. You were a very different sort of yeah. person as well, I think, then. You mentioned that uh, part of your life had gone past in a blur, and I concluded, perhaps incorrectly, but perhaps rightly, that that was to do with your drinking problem. And yeah, sort of a lot of it was to do with overindulgence in everything, really, drinking and eating and uh, being depressed. And uh, when I was depressed, I ate. When I was depressed, I drank. And uh, I drank too much, and I ate too much. And I just overindulged, and it was just, uh, it got out of hand, it got out of control, I became more miserable. So this year I decided to do something about it. And uh, ever since I've done, that's about four and a half months ago, and uh, since uh, I've done that, I've watched what I ate, have eaten. I've, I don't eat sugar, and I don't eat the white flour. And I eat everything else. Um, and I <laughs> <laughs> so, so how drastically has your lifestyle changed then? Have you found that it's affected you a lot? Do you, 
You go to bed earlier? I get up in the mornings, yeah? And I get up in the mornings and I'm quite happy to get up instead of being a miserable bastard, yeah. Um, I used to... I, do you know what happened? I, I went to... A, I'm just being very serious for a minute. I went to, uh, to visit a young kid who di was dying of AIDS this year, a boy called Ryan White. He had a tremendous effect on people in America with his courage because his family were victimized, he was victimized. He was, you know, wasn't, he was thrown out of school and they, they had to move to another town. And I went to the hospital and stayed for like eight or nine days and was there when he died. And it was a very moving experience just to be with his family because they didn't have an ounce of resentment towards anybody who'd done anything to them. Uh, and here was me who'd go into a, a hotel suite or a private jet suite. I don't like the color of it. Uh, I just, my life had got totally, totally out of proportion. I was totally lost in um, self-indulgence and self-obsession. And it was this family who had bricks thrown through their windows and their, the child was dying of AIDS and he never had any, anything bad to say about anybody either. And that, that sort of courage and humility sort of thought, oh my God, uh, I won't complain about anything ever again. Of course I have done, but I mean it has made, it hasn't had an effect on me. Well, uh, I just think, you know, that I just got so carried away, and, and we do get carried away in this business. We just take everything for granted. We just don't stop and smell the roses. So I'm trying to stop a bit and smell a few roses, man. You're going to play some music for us this evening. I know there are two songs you've prepared for us. Yes, I have. To. We've wielded an old... Fanny Craddock, isn't it? Here's <laughs> <laughs> a, a couple you prepared earlier. Let's <laughs> roll over to the That's piano so here. Uh -uh. First one you're going to do this evening. It's Blue Eyes, just for you, dear. It's a beautiful song, Lovely. and beautifully sung, I'm sure. Mr. Elton John, ladies and gentlemen. Blue Eyes Babies, yeah Blue Eyes Like a deep blue sea Blue, blue day Blue eyes Favors got Blue eyes When the morning comes I'll be far Oh, and I see blue eyes holding back the tears, holding back the pain. Baby's got blue eyes. She's alone.
older and two minutes wiser. If you've just joined us, my guest tonight is Mr. Elton John. If you haven't, well, it can be our little secret. Um, Elton, if we, we carry on chatting here, um, there was a book I saw recently, the Sunday Times brought out a book called The Book of the Witch, and I think they have the 400 wealthiest people uh, in the country in there, and you're in it, and they estimate your wealth at 100 million pounds. Uh, so, A, I have my Christmas list for you. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, B, I just wondered, is that, is, I, I'm not going to try and ask you exactly how much I have, but is that, is that the correct, is that kind of in the white ballpark? I have no idea, I don't, I've, my, my career has never been based on, on, on money, I and mean, a lot of people um, like to count their money and are obsessed with keeping it. Um, I seem to spend a lot, I saw the football club drain me for quite some, I don't really know, I mean assets, I don't know, I, I just, I don't save much, uh, I don't have investments. Um, I have some paintings and that's about it. Um, I honestly don't know. I think that would be a good... They always over, seem to overestimate, especially when you know you get the tabloids and they say, so-and-so just earned a million pounds in a minute. And yeah. uh, you know, forget it, just take about five noughts of that. Um, well, well, after, after tax and stuff. I don't know, I'm, I'm not worth anywhere near that amount, I wouldn't think. Well, speaking about people who like to sort of hold it. I'll make a it. phone call after the show and let you know. You're out of your <laughs> misery, yeah. yeah. I'm desperate to know, yeah, so I'm yeah, not sleeping. Yeah. But speaking of people who do like to hold and save it, um, George Michael springs to mind. And I, know, <laughs> yeah. I know you're very friendly with him. Yeah, George, Jog, yeah. I believe, is, yes. is, is yes. Uh, I visit his caravan often, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's in the same book, uh, and they estimate his uh, wealth at 65 million. Would you think that would be... Uh, he's done very well, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> done very well, George, in a short space of time. Um, I don't, no, George doesn't fritter money like I... I mean, he is, you know... He's a very basic Greek boy. And uh, well, he's, very, he's been very generous to me. He gave me a lovely CD jukebox for my birthday, which is lovely. Um, I've done, he's not stingy by any means, but I, who cares? I mean, I don't know. He's not, but you are very generous with your money, aren't you? You I just need to splash it around. Well, I've, listen, I could be knocked over by. I mean, oh, this is going to I'm going to get all these bloody letters tomorrow. Dear sir, <laughs> seeing as you said on the Jonathan Ross show, you could be knocked over by a bus tomorrow. Can I have it before you're knocked over? Uh, P.S. I am a bus driver. I enjoy some. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, after this, <laughs> after this series, Jonathan, you may well be. Yeah, well, let me ask on this because it's. Ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, you know that that, uh, that would be funny if it were so close to the truth. Let's hope you're not on the 41 to Woehampton either. <laughs> mm. But let me ask you. Um, it's still loosely on the subject of money, though. You're not that money motivated. But if, for example, yeah. as may will happen, Labour get in at the next election. Then people set yourself in the highest sort of earnings I've always bracket. been, but that's nonsense. That's all old wives' tales. I mean, I've always been here. I've always been a, a British tax, and I've always been a British resident. I don't really. I mean, I, I'm, I survive. You know, I don't. I don't exactly want for anything in my life. So you wouldn't leave the country. You wouldn't. I belong in this country. I mean, if I was going to go, I would have gone in 1987 when the sun. You know, we had that thing with the sun. I wanted to leave, but if I'd have left, I would have looked as if I'd have been guilty. So I had to stay. So um, I really wanted to leave at that point. I just wanted to get out the furthest possible. But no, if I no, I I, I like it here. I, I travel a lot, uh, and this is my home, and it's always it always has been. And uh, there was a time when I used to hate coming back to England because uh, my life was in such a mess. Um, and I used to hate going anywhere. I, I used to go on holiday, and I used to take myself with me, and that used to be a real drag. Um, <laughs> well, um, it would have been fine if I hadn't gone. Um, but, but I mean, you are, I can't really imagine a country without you because not wanting to make you sound ancient, but you are almost like a kind of national institution. Yes, dear. Yeah. Rather like the royal family. And I know you, uh, you're a neighbour of the Queen Mum. The Queen's Mum. Does she pop in for tea often? Do you chat, Mike? Um, she comes over for a game of Trivial Pursuit now and then. <laughs> Name me a famous ex-Zar beginning with Z. She's good on those. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I mean, I can't really divulge those sort of secrets. 
Unless let's you go. pay me more money. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go back to the charity aspect of yours, because you, you've always been involved in charities. I know you, you said that, um, not just days, but you were always involved in kind of charity cricket matches and concerts way before Live Aid. And this year you were part of the Nebworth Bill. Yeah. Um, now, do you think that they're going to keep happening those sorts of concerts, or do you think people are beginning to get tired of it and the kind of compassion fatigue is setting? Well, the Nebworth show was probably one of the most brilliantly organised shows that I've been on. Um, it was like that. And it was for a very, very good cause. I personally didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I just thought it was just one more show and one show too many. But that's from my point of view. I just think that that sort of show now has had its day because it's the same group of people. I mean, um, I know that we were, we all were asked because we'd all been given this the Silver Clef Award over the years. You know, you get an award for being old in this thing. They give you an there. And then we were all asked to play and it, was, it, it went down okay. I didn't enjoy it. Uh, there were several reviews in newspapers that said, uh, that picked on the point that it looked like an old of old dinosaurs on stage. There's nothing wrong with being my age and playing music, but it would have been nice to have some younger people as well. Mm. And um, I'm just a bit fed up with, you know, those sort of concerts. I've done them, I've seen them, I've flown over them, I've, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just, uh, I think it's let, live, uh, let it just die for Well, the novelty isn't there so much for the audience either, is it, I don't think? Uh, no, it's just a you know, collection, the same old, there's only so many times you can jam with someone. Yeah. You know? What about, what about you? You said you'd like some younger talent. Your younger days, of course, were marked by your love of flamboyant dress sense and dresses. I was going to yes. say, but it's kind of wrong. Um, but flamboyant gear across the board. I mean, there probably were a few dresses. I can't there, remember. There, there probably were, yeah. <laughs> that, that, was, that was Bowie, wasn't it? Um, um, do you miss not wearing that? I mean, is that something that you, you'd like to bring back into stage performance? No, I took it on a little bit too long, actually. I think um, the last tour of Australia, when I was, uh, did the symphony tour, and I wore the, the, the one with the dressing up was like Mozart or someone like that was okay, but the one, you know, the bit before, I mean, please. I just took it, I, ne I never knew whether to say, say no to anything, and um, uh, people said, listen, Elton, it's about time you stop doing that, and I said, no, 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 no. And that's, it harks back, harkens back to the question you asked me earlier about uh, my change of life and my change of way of thinking. I'm beginning to listen to people a bit more and, and deciding that I don't know everything. Um, uh, but I did, you know, I thought I knew everything. Um, you seem a lot, a lot happier now. Um, I am, yeah. I, I feel much happier. I'm much more content. Um, I've been chasing around for years trying to find out who I am and I got farther and farther away from it um, by just... Um, I, you know, when I was happy, if I had a hit record I was happy or I'd met someone I liked, I could never be happy enough. I always had to have something else to make me happier. Why? It's stupid. I was never content with just being happy. So, um, and I just took it, everything just got exploded on me. And my own fault, um, and I've sorted it out, and I just don't want to go back to that way of life. Um, uh, and I don't think I will. Well, I, I hope not as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elton John. Well, we're short on time now, but Elton, I did say you'd do two numbers for us, so if you'd perhaps be so kind as to go over to the piano there. Marvellous. There you go. And, uh, while Elton makes his way to the Ivies, I've got plenty of time to thank all of tonight's guests, uh, Mr Elton John. If you've enjoyed tonight's show, there's another one on Monday, so see you then. In the meantime, here to play us out with the bitches back once again, Mr Elton John.
hate to say, I hate to say, The Lethal Weapon 3 soundtrack also includes a Clapton duet with Elton John on a song called Runaway Train. Meantime, Eric's close personal Sunday, a veritable galaxy of stars turned out to perform at London's Wembley Stadium at the Concert for Life, a tribute to the late Freddie Mercury. This report from Kurt Loder. I think people kind of forget that those other three guys up there, it must be a, a hell of a night for them. I mean, I can, I can really feel for them. Freddie Mercury was gone, but his Queen colleagues, John Deacon, Roger Taylor, and the great guitarist Brian May, reunited one last time to honor their late flamboyant friend. I'm not afraid to speak out and say things that I want to do or, or do 